Thank you for giving me a possibility to see many of you. Um, I would talk about wild physics in superconducting junctions. So just to start with, it won't be wild physics in traditional periodic crystalline solids, but it won't be wild physics in uh, linear circuits, as we have heard yesterday. It will be somewhere in between in superconducting junctions. This research is a part of wider research effort where I have many collaborators from France, Germany, Japan, even from the Netherlands, and it's been supported by many, many funding energies, uh, agencies, sorry, but you know it's never enough for a good research. So it's wild physics, it still rolls over the same cone as in most talks of today and yesterday, but the cone, realization of the cone will be a bit different. First I will talk about multi-terminal superconducting junctions. I will explain while, while uh, property of having many terminals is important. And I will explain kind of interesting analogy between the properties of multi-terminal superconducting junction and properties of a crystal of a material, perhaps topological material. Uh, right, this analogy looks very, you know, stupid and superfluous from first look, becomes a bit deeper if you Think about this more. Right, then I will concentrate on wild singularities in four terminal junction, which corresponds to three dimensional crystal. Uh, and I will play a bit with dimensionalities to prove that in this case you can measure topological invariance, which I guess uh, for me is a essential criterion. If you want to simulate a topological system <coughs> in any means, a crystal, <coughs> electric circuit, or anything else, you should be able to make an experiment to observe topological invariance. That we do through transconductance, very similar to the quantum pole effect. Uh, and uh, after that, I will uh, try to outline some new results, very simple. While <laughs> transconductance is a global effect, of topology in this subject. I'd rather concentrate on vicinity uh, of uh, the singularity via singularity where I can add some spintronics because this workshop is mentioned about spin dynamics, um, uh, if you recall. Uh, right, and uh, I will describe a tricky, interesting interaction effect on via singularity, which is trivial, but to my knowledge, was not kind of investigated before. That's outline. Let me start with the junction. Right. So, many starts with two. Two terminal superconducting junctions are widely known. There are the Johnson junctions. In this case, we have energy which depends on phase difference between two superconducting electrodes. Just a sign for If one goes from tunnel barriers to more transparent structures, if one uses scattering theory method and thinks about transparencies of different channels, one gets an interesting result that each channel gives rise to a bound state, so-called Andreev state, and the energies of these Andreev bound states do depend on phase in a certain way, depending on transparency. Uh, superconducting physics is such that the energies of these bound states are immediately reflected in ground state energy. And eventually there is a contribution to ground state energy which can be expressed in terms of this bound state. 
this is symmetry of design uh, uh, but deflections, if you wish. Right. So two terminal junctions have been fabricated for ages, have been had, uh, uh, investigated very carefully, but there is technical possibility to arrange multi terminal superconducting junctions. There are two examples. That's one from Grenoble. It's all made from metal. It has three terminal uh, superconducting terminals and um, let's see. Copper island inside. That encompasses many channels. With none of wires, one can do few channel structures. This is a structure made in Delft from two semiconducting, semiconducting nanowires that cross in such a way, and they manage to make four superconducting electrodes. Very good. That, so that they can do this, they can measure it. The only problem is to motivate it. Why it is good for? Let me make very trivial uh, remark. There will be steel levels and drive levels in this junction. And there will be periodic functions of the phases. But just the number of these independent phases will be bigger. All right? <coughs> Let me outline this um, analogy. I'm going to use analogy is trivial, if you wish. If one compares this with band structure, we also have energy levels which depend on three periodic parameters. Right? So if I take this structure, I have four terminals of integration invariance, I can set one terminal to zero, to F. So I have three independent phases. And I can observe band structure of Andreev levels. These uh, phases, superconducting phase differences, will play the role of quasi-momentum. I will have periodic band structure. There will be levels, there will be, of course, very curvatures uh, coming from discreteness of the levels. Well, uh, that looks no interesting analogy to, uh, to entertain first year students. Of course, one sees immediately that it's not complete. First of all, we have trivial point. The, um, District states band structure lives only in a finite window up to the gap of the bulk material. At high energy it becomes continuous spectrum, mercy, one can distinguish that. As a side remark, the same happens in crystals. We have all already forgotten that after 15 electron volts there is continuous spectrum in solids. Who remembers about this? <laughs> Albert remembers. Very good. Uh, so it's not such a big issue. What's a bigger issue? Of course, in a metal, you have all quasi-momenta at once. You feel <coughs> the uh, insulating band, you have all quasi-momenta at once. Here, if you set phases to a certain fashion, you assess on the single value of quasi-momenta. So there must be very different. But I will show how to circumvent this substance. Right. Uh, here, you can see already something here. I tune the phases in such a way that upon changing phase one, I get to a conical point. Right. So let me slowly drift to this conical point. But let me first mention another strange part. Um, if one takes more terminals, one can have multi-dimensional solids. 
the number of dimensions in these solids, just number of terminals minus one. One can make five dimensional crystal for no, for no cost, basically. Right, then topology comes into play. Of course, from this five dimensional crystal, I cannot make bricks, I cannot uh, build a house from these bricks, right? But if I find a signature of topology, uh, topology the topology will be the same as in five dimensional crystal and in a uh, uh, junction with several terminals. So, in fact, uh, such schemes can be interesting for search of multi dimensional topological invariance, realization, observation, possible application. But let me back, get back to three dimensions. Let me remind you of very childish uh, transparency about uh, wild singularities. Uh, one can think of massive uh, particles with conical spectrum. I think about this as a missed paragraph in landau lifshitz <laughs> If you re uh, remember landau lifshitz they <laughs> explain why there is a level of repulsion. In order to match two energies of two levels, seemingly one has just has to go in one dimension over the line. They explain the level of repulsion, the no degeneracies because of that. They forgotten to mention that if one increases parameter space to three dimensions, one can have crossings of the level bands just for <coughs> three. Just occasional crossings. Nothing to do with high energy physics. All right? And uh, in any case, there will be conical spectrum in, in the vicinity of any crossing point. Uh, anyway, there will be a very curvature and a corresponding uh, monopole uh, touch associated with any wild point of this kind. All right? Do we agree on that? Very good. Then, what do we need in order to find well singularities in four terminal structures? We have three parameters to play with, and we want to find crossings of the bands. It seems like one goal game. Three parameters. I, I just need to take a sufficiently random system with a random scattering matrix. Then with some luck, I can have the singularity. <coughs> a little bit fun point that I want to have it at zero energy, precisely chemical potential. That seems to be impossible. That seems to uh, require yet another parameter, false parameter. Nothing of the kind. It turns out that level repulsion somehow ceases to work partially at zero energy in superconducting material. So it works. With three parameters, we can find wild points. They come here in pairs of, uh, in um, two pairs, with opposite topological charges, uh, and there is inversion symmetry in my artificial material, which is eventually related to time reversal symmetry. If I change the time, I do change the, the sign of all phase differences, so it's equivalent to inversion symmetry. Okay, I have four points. I have conical point, conical uh, spectrum near each point. Right. Still, I would like to see some uh, experimental mm. signatures. How to do this? In order to do this, let me just uh, exploit flexibility. There must be uh, enormous technological efforts in technology to go from three-dimensional uh, metal to two-dimensional metal, right? Here, I can just do it by fixing one of the three phases. Okay, so I have two-dimensional crystal uh, spanned by phases uh, uh, one and two, right? And I can eventually calculate term number in this um, <coughs> two-dimensional band structure. 
and it appears to be non-trivial. Any time, uh, let, let me imagine a, a plane moving in this direction, any time this plane crosses rising galaxy, chain number jumps, bottom. All right, how to see that? Remember, we wanted to have all, to simulate feeling of electrons. We can do it in this way. We can just apply wall touch to the electrons. In this way, the phases will increase linearly with voltage, and then, in the course of their motion, will feel the whole band structure, all right? And there will be a signature in the current of this motion. So current here is mostly superconducting, but there is a next order correction in adiabatic limit, which is sensitive to local barrier current. Now I'm going to sleep. Phases. I'm going to write this barrier curvature of the whole plane, the motion plane. So I got chain number. And in fact, what one can see is a quantized transconductance, very similar to Hall effect, anti-symmetric <coughs> conductance tensor with quantized <coughs> value. All right. I think I have like three, four minutes more? More like eight minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, we, we have started with the delay. Uh, uh, right, just let me mention them at this point. It is like quantum hole, realized with a superconducting sample, uh, asymmetric mm -hmm. transconductance. Uh, moreover, it's a tunable quantum hole. Remember, I can tune the soft phase, one can move the plane, so one can switch chain number. This curve, let me zoom on it. Demonstrates dependence on transconductance on this uh, tune parameter, F3, so one can see jumps of transconductance any time the plane passes while singularity position. Good. Can so I ask a quick question? Yeah. So, so now you said that this allows you to integrate over the barrier curvature such that you get the chain number, but don't you have to integrate in some kind of periodic fashion? So that, or you do this like many, many, because you have now I of t, and then, then you measure I That's of t. made automatically if you just apply constant voltage. In this case, phase is, is swept linearly. If voltages are commensurate by chance, that it will be, it will be only lying in two-dimensional space. But generally, voltages are not commensurate, do, do, do not commensurate, all right? That's why this line will uniformly fill the whole two-dimensional plane. It will be a precise simulation of electron filling in this two-dimensional band. All right, so that was global property. Let me look at, oh, let me mention that uh, that was for a few channels. If one considers more uh, conventional structures made from metal, they will have plenty of channels. And basically, they will manifest <laughs> continuous spectrum. Interestingly, that this spectrum can be gapped, or like here, or gapless. And that could be, could be changed by, by again by applying superconducting phases to the limits. If one looks 
smirk at the gapless uh, phase. We'll try to resolve the levels. One can actually find a little plenty of direct points in this region where the phase is complex. The only point one needs to resolve these levels, that's typically like uh, 10, uh, 10 micro electron volt level separation. So if you were better, <coughs> you can find it. Uh, right, uh, there them I still have. Do I still have three minutes? Yes, you do. Well, very good. Then I will uh, uh, say, say something about the vicinity of this. <laughs> right. Basically, I would like to mention spin orbit effect and interaction effect. Spin orbit. It's very simple. In this case, spin orbit interaction splits the cone. So the cone will spin up, goes up. Does it? Yes. The cone will spin down, goes down. The point I, I really got a little bit uh, crazy trying to figure out the physical properties from this picture of splitting cones. So let me redraw it differently. <coughs> let me redraw energies of money body states. <coughs> let me draw energy of the ground state, which is singlet of the first excited state, which is also singlet and two spinful states corresponding to even uh, odd number of, of uh, electrons <coughs> in, in my junction. Well, in this case it becomes, becomes uh, marvelously simple. We see that there is still one point in the spectrum of single states and there is no singularity in the spectrum of, uh, of um, spin doublet. Spin doublet is split, it's a consequence of the fact that we are at finite phase positions. We have broken time reversibility, that's why it causes, it causes uh, magnetization. Very good. As you can see, in this region of phase, near the vicinity, the energy of the spin doublet is bigger than the energy of the ground state so what we will see is the following. In the vicinity of the wild point, energetically favorable state is in fact magnetized. We have a single particle with spin which is in the vicinity of the point. Well, in order to achieve this, in order to bring it into thermal equilibrium, one needs normal lead. Otherwise, in superconductor itself, there is no switching between odd and even parity of fermion number. Once we do this, one can play more interesting things, because if one takes two leads, one can organize terminally through this quasi-particle <coughs> level. And the way one can make spin pumps, spin filters, all things which, are, uh, which have been studied in the context of quantum dots, but only now with superconducting injunction. And the, uh, the spin pumping can be driven by very tiny phase differences in the vicinity of the point. That was about spintronics interaction. which is strange in the structures. In fact, manifestation of interaction is the fact that one cannot make precise phase bias of the structure. Looking at it realistically, there will be all these quantum fluctuations at the end of the, uh, uh, of the leads coming to the structure. One can Simulate it as a sort of uh, soft, uh, soft uh, bonding of these phases to external phases, which can be parabolic, and there's also quantum fluctuations coming into play. So, believe me or not, it's the most natural interaction set up for superconducting junctions. What are the results? Uh, <laughs> 
two, in, uh, two interesting results. Believe me or not, conical point survives. It's uh, kind of uh, one can uh, expect it from general topological uh, uh, considerations, but it's fun to see that even uh, interaction does not spoil it. Second, interaction actually favors even states, which means that dependent parameters which you can tune, you can actually get rid of this um, magnetization, favorable magnetization in vicinity if you don't want it. Another point, if uh, one makes this confinement with small quantum fluctuations, one can get strong anisotropy of the cone. So the conical spectrum will be only in one direction if you move in three-dimensional phase space. As to other direction, it will be almost flat. So the resulting kind of figure of uh, low-line energy states will be more like pancake in these two dimensions, which is interesting from the point of view of quantum manipulation. All right, I guess I'm done with my talk. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>